it's dark. No light can penetrate the suffocating blanket of inky navy blue. Swirls of imaginary color expand and recede in your wide, unblinking eyes. There's a faint vibration beneath you, but your body is numb. Immobilized and unable to uncover the source of its consistent tremor, you're naked, completely disrobed, and a cold panic seeps into your bones. Or maybe they're just nervous with the environment surrounding you. Suddenly, piercing light appears, expanding in your ocular, as though a visor was being lifted. You want to close your eyes against the harsh, blinding light, but the memories refuse to do as you command. A blurry figure looms over you, slowly coming close into you as they lean down. They examine you, their faces carefully neutral, not a demonic grin that you would expect from horror movies you've seen. They move along, completely ignoring the fact that you're conscious. They run gloved hands along your stomach, probing. You try to call out for help, but nothing happens. Your muscles have been effectively frozen by whatever they've given you. The prodding hands retreat and the figure disappears from your field of view, leaving you to stare blankly at the white ceiling. What are you going to do? What do they want with you? These questions remain unanswered, seeing as you cannot voice them. And no one is inclined to monologue them for you, as so many psychopaths on TV seem to be. Figure a man, you realize, returns, accompanied by put-together-looking female. Long, strawberry blonde hair, tied up professionally in a high ponytail. She looks down at you through opaque glasses, and out the corner of your eye, you see a flash of silver. The man with gloves has a scalpel, and he slices deftly through your stomach. You want to scream, terror seizing your unresponsive body as he sticks his hand inside of you, reaching down into your intestines. Finally, horrifyingly, he extracts his hand from your abdominal, bringing out a fistful of cartilage. You want to vomit, you would vomit, but you're helpless. Entirely at the clemency of the whim. You want to scream, but your pleas for mercy are trapped as thoroughly within your body as you are. This is what seemed to be the victim's spinal cord. The man sets a glob of cartilage on the metal table, uncovering a broken length of serrated metal. The woman leans forward, examining the object carefully, pen poised and ready above the crisp notepad. Where did the weapon enter the victim, Professor? The woman shifts her lab coat subtly, nervous about the asking question. The professor smiles reassuringly and gestures to the underside of your body. The entrance wound penetrates three inches left of the spine, breaking the hilt six inches into the torso, slicing the spinal cord cleanly as it did so. The woman scrawls furiously, glasses sliding slowly down the bridge of her nose. Do you follow the chain of motion? Yes, sir. The woman nods determinedly, and the professor swiftly removes his gloves, discarding them into the nearby medical waste bin. He grasps the handle of the drawer, rolling you back into the complete oblivion of the morgue. 